What's up, YouTube? We are live with another. I'm laughing. We are live with another edition of Sit Down Sundays. Today's edition is going to be kind of a, a recap of the Spring 2014 lookbook that you guys just saw yesterday. That hopefully you guys saw yesterday. If you uh, if you didn't watch it, go click on it after this video. Uh, link will be in the description. But basically, today we just kind of want to talk about the thoughts behind the lookbook. Maybe uh, talk about things that you guys maybe didn't catch. Kind of our our uh, thoughts and inspiration behind it. And on the panel today, I have um, three very, very critical people that played a very integral, integral. What's the word I'm looking? Integral. In What's the word I'm looking? I can't even figure it out. Integral, integral part in this video. Um, we're missing one dude calling Land Force, um, but he is not going to be with us tonight. But the rest of the three, I will let uh, give their introduction. So Mac, would you like to tell the people who you are, what you do, what you play? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm AKA and Visionary, and I was shooting and okay. editing the uh, Day in the Life slash Lookbook video for the homie Jacob so Keller. Yeah, it, was, it was super fun. So, dude behind the camera, dude uh, edited the whole thing. Uh, that was all Max shoot. So a huge thank you to him. Uh, Mikey, my man. Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm Mikey Reeves. I'm Captain of Letterman shit, man. Uh, I stay mostly behind the scenes, but I'm just there to make sure everybody doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the one uh, recurring member that you guys know a lot of, Alex Veltri, would you like to tell him about what you do a little bit? Yeah. What's up, guys? Uh, Alex Veltri. I did the creative direction for the lookbook um, and some of the art direction for the entire project uh, that we'll talk about. And I also designed for Black Ribbon uh, coming out in 2015. So, thanks. Um, let's just jump right into it. So, one of the kind of talked about things about the look was indeed the intro um, that we kind of shot down underneath the Morrison Bridge in Portland, Oregon. Um, I don't. I mean, like I could definitely talk about like what the thought behind it was. But it, did you guys have any thoughts that you wanted to get out of the way before I kind of do that? Uh, let's go like. Just in order to talk, or not to talk about it. You want me to start first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, as you guys saw, it kind of started out <laughs> with just me by myself. And the whole point behind that was, and I was wearing clothes that I used to wear back in the day. Um, can, are you guys, can you guys, there we go. Um, so I was wearing a Mishka sweatshirt, I was wearing a, a pink dolphin hat, and I was wearing Converse shoes. So that was like my old self. And as you can tell, there was no one behind me. Um, and as I started walking forward, one uh, pieces started changing. So, like, I threw on a jacket, and then I took off the hat and threw on a different hat. And as I started changing my outfit and as I started walking forward and progressing with myself, more people started getting behind me and more people started following me. So it was kind of like, although it only lasted like 10 seconds and it never really explicitly uh, stated that, it was kind of like a little insight and look into my my progression uh, from the channel and the way I looked and my outfits and all that and how people just started following me along the way. That's kind of what the whole gist of that intro was. I'm going to let anyone else take it uh, however they want to, to go about it. Um, I'll go talk on that. Um, I thought that that would, when I initially came up with that idea, it was, that was supposed to be the entire lookbook, actually. Um, and then with help from Mikey and Colin, we, uh, we came up with some New ideas, obviously. The, yeah, I didn't even video. know that. But yeah, so the the original video was um, supposed to be just that intro where he starts out wearing his old clothes and everybody behind him, and it it was supposed to change, just like Jacob was saying. And um, but as he got into the looks that he's in now, you were going to see like six or seven or eight looks in that entire walking thing. Um, that gets really difficult, though. So yeah, to edit and stuff. Yeah. And Matt came through clutch with a bunch of really good ideas, so we were able yeah. to pull something off. I mean, you guys just came to me, or you, or I was talking with you, Alex, and you sh just told me the whole concept, and it was I was just like blown away. I was like, wow, that's like that's a crazy concept. Let's run with it, and then uh, we just tried to work together and like bring it to life, you know? Yeah. Um. Was that me? Do I talk? Do I talk about it now? Yeah. Oh man, the intro. <clears throat> like Alex said, 
you know, originally when he came to us, we were trying to figure out what to do with the uh, spring look book. We wanted to be different. We wanted to be kind of the next level production. And uh, like you said, that was the original idea, which which we liked and we kind of we went with first. Uh, and we we're gonna have people walk in in on on the screen and hand him different clothes and have him kind of changing as he goes. Obviously, it wouldn't be changing, but at each scene he'd be in a progressing like like uh, the intro ended up being. Uh, once we really talked about it, we decided we, want, we wanted the whole thing to be more, but uh, but we wanted to keep that that scene in it. So that's how you know Alex and Colin and I all put our heads together and came up with that intro, which I think is perfect. And it just it really captures Jacob's progression, uh, the people behind him. You know, I like how it starts off with just him, and then it's then there's uh, Josh is there, and uh, and Alex is there, and then at the end it's got the whole you know the, the team plus some, uh, which really represents where he's at now and you know where he's headed. Yeah. It's perfect. Um. And, like, just real quick, briefly, like, I really, like, this was not an easy task. Um, you guys really only saw, you know, 11, 12 minutes. But uh, this was, I think, what, four or five weeks, um, maybe seven separate, like, Starbucks meetings, um, really just hashing out uh, what we wanted to do and just getting everyone in the right places at the right time. Like, we had to, like, set up all these different scenarios, like, Make sure David could get the black ribbon on time. Make sure all these people could be under the Morrison Bridge on time. Um, we had to coordinate with Compound, with Harlem, with the Produce Row, with the restaurant. Like, I know that you guys like that's just like not a lot of what people see, but there's a lot that went on behind the scenes of this thing. Um, and I'm very happy to say it kind of was a production in a way. Like, that's how I see it. It wasn't just a YouTube video to me. Um, so I appreciate everyone that really did help me out with with that. Um, it was a really huge learning experience for yeah. me. Um, you know, just thinking about like the way everything is produced and all the support that they really have, like <clears throat> that on a music video set and all the resources that they have, and the challenges that we were kind of faced with on a team of four. Like we all took on a production assistant like bitch job, but we also had the um, kind of like higher up, if you will, um, yeah. decision making. So it was really like a, a nice balance and, and, a, and a real learning curve to navigate that. And um, I'm definitely more confident going forward in making even better product and um, collaborating with people like even better, making it more efficient and stuff like that. Um, but working with Mac was, was definitely um, awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, and I mean, same, like, reverse for me. Like, I've never had a shoot where I'm working with people that are that are really helping me on both sides, like, with the equipment just in general and also, like, with the brains because you guys have thought so much about this and put in so much mental effort. You know, it's not just me coming up with the concept. It's like we got three, four, five other brains working on the project. Yeah. And I think it really showed in the work at the end, like, it was it was it was a real guerrilla underground style type video, but you could tell it came out organically through how all the um, prep we put in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that showed. You know, the you know uh, I don't want to give away too much about how we shot this or anything, but uh, something I'm really proud of for, with everybody is, uh, man, it's not you know we had a lot of uh, there were a lot of problems that came up along the way. Yeah. That we had to troubleshoot on the fly. We had some, uh, as as we all know, we had some a couple late nights where it was like, oh shoot, we got to <laughs> make some adjustments that have to be done early the next morning. Uh, so there were some late nights and some early mornings that y'all don't necessarily see. <laughs> yeah. More, more than you just see on on screen. Uh, they go into this and a ton of work by a ton of people. There was a bank robbery there during one of our meetings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot that went into. Uh, <laughs> what y'all see now? Yeah. A lot of work by a lot of a lot of really talented people, and it's awesome to see it come to fruition. I'm glad. I'm really glad that like that's a part of my life story now. You know, like with all these people, it was it was just like good, good six weeks of hard work. So yeah, yeah. And a lot of a lot of people may think, it, yo, you guys are like, yo, this is just like a, a YouTube video, dude. Like you guys are talking about it like you made some movie. To us, this was a movie, man. <laughs> like. We lived it. Like, that shit, I was stressed. For Everyone was like, where are you, Jacob? Like, you haven't posted a video. Like, I was stressed for four weeks about this video. Like, that's why I wasn't posting anything. Because I wanted to just, like, instead of just 
it's the quality over quantity thing. Instead of buying 10 t-shirts for $100, I could buy two t-shirts for $100. I didn't want to put out 10 videos in a month and, and make them half-ass. I wanted to make a fucking production with these people on the panel, and that took four weeks. Like, that's why I was gone, um, and I'm, I'm happy it, it came out the way it did. Um, but we, we can get on to the next scene. I don't want to keep ranting. Um, next scene was uh, 10 a.m. We had a uh, meeting with Black Ribbon. Um, Alex, I kind of want you to take it away with that one because I didn't really know where I was going to go with that. Um, yeah, I mean, this it really was like uh, started out as a lookbook. Um, but day in the life was more predominant because and, – and one of the things that I want people to understand is like this was like a real day. Like, yeah, this didn't happen in a real day. Everything, but we just planned the outfits and and had a little bit more planning involved. Um, but I'm I'm really glad that David was able to speak um, and kind of give you guys a peek into where we're going with that. Um, I don't want to give away too much yet. There's just it's just not at the right spot, and it's a little bit too far out to do that. But um, it's the same amount of effort that goes into something like that production that we just did with this video, like that's gonna be multiplied even with with this with this brand, so Yeah. Two thousand fifteen. Um and I'm just gonna side note real quick. A lot of people were saying like, yo, this really wasn't a lookbook, but the lookbook aspect of this video was kind of what I did was we had what, seven different scenarios. Like seven different things that were cuts and during those seven things, as you guys saw, I was wearing different outfits. That was the look portion of this video. It was just like different outfits that I'd wear to these different scenarios. So, um, and a lot of people were saying like, "Yo, you're not trying on the clothes in these segment videos." Well, that was I was like, "Yo, just wait. Like, I'm gonna be wearing the clothes." So I told you a lot of you guys just wait till Saturday. And Saturday was when I was wearing all the clothes. So that was what it was. Um, does anyone else want to say anything about Black Ribbon? Uh, I'll touch on what you just said. You can only title it so appropriately, like, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, we're not really in the business of pleasing everybody, so somebody's going to find something wrong or whatever in their mind, but, like, it was a lookbook. It was also a day in the life, so that's how we titled it, and if you're upset about it, then I don't really understand why, but... <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. No, I thought it was oh, kind of no. groundbreaking in that way. Like, I've never, I've never worked on a project that's like lookbook, um, whatever. Like, almost even a music video too, because there was so many like cuts to the music in in like segments of it. You know, slash day in the life. It's like that's kind of a groundbreaking thing, at least for me. I've never worked on anything like that. Yeah. Um, Yo, uh, can I can I go off some of the Max said? Yeah, go ahead, dude. Uh, what people may, you know, the viewers may realize and may may not fully grasp is like, you know, that that stuff is real. Those are the people that are really around us, even down to the to the music, and the music sounds awesome. But yo, we got a guy around us that makes pretty awesome music too, yeah. uh, and uh, that's real. You know, uh, LV is. So I live with the fool. Uh, yeah. He's in our world. Uh, so you know, we didn't. It's all our game. It's all it's all Letterman. It's all us. It's your scene right there. It was real. Absolutely, man. And shooting it was real. Like, I had so much fun just shooting it. Like, right. people have been asking me what equipment was I using to make everything look, like, so smooth or whatever. And, like, most of the shots, honestly, were me with the camera around my neck with a whiskey Coke in my hand at Harlem. Like, <laughs> that, that's, what, that's how it was real, just like you were saying, Mikey. Yo, you know, I think there's a shot in there. That Curto took of this because it's got you in it. I think yeah, like, yeah. it <laughs> he just like let, he just grabbed my camera. He's like, let me yeah. shoot. I'm like, yeah. I was like <laughs> that's how real it was. Curto, Curto even not in there. Exactly. Yeah. You were shooting too for a sec, Mikey. At dinner, you grabbed the camera. Oh, I did. Yeah, I took a wicked selfie, didn't I? Yeah, a bunch of wicked selfies, dude. <laughs> I, need send, I need to send you that, bro. <laughs> um. All right, let's move on to what was the next one? The next one was. Um, uh, the studio, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Propane LV um, and Shuts. So those are two dudes that you're going to be hearing about very, very soon, hopefully. Shuts is um, huge. Yeah, so those dudes, um, Shuts is the producer and Propane LV is the rapper. So for all the music in this video uh, was done by Propane LV and Shuts. So we wanted to get like a, yo, let's go check out what Propane's doing in the studio kind of vibe. So as you saw, we walked up. 
went into the studio, dapped everyone up, and it was just kind of like a, an organic and real conversation that we would have normally had in day-to-day -day life, but we just had a camera on in that situation. So that was Dusty just talking about you know himself and how he views himself in the in the music industry. Um, and real quick side note, that whole like I said, the whole video was produced by Shuts and Propane LV, and we even like had Shuts score some of the video. Like we said, "Yo, can you make adjustments to a song to fit this part of the video?" So he would send us music that fit this scene of the video. So it's it's just like it was a production. Like we literally had someone make music for this video, which was amazing. So anyone want to give backstory into the the Propane LV studio scene? Yeah, you want um, me to take this? Yeah. Or you, you want you want to take us off? Sorry, man. Um, first off, big fucking shout out to uh, Alexander Devine and uh, Flatline Studios. That was big, man. That was, that was cool to let us get in there and uh, get a look at what they do in there. You know the magic they work. Um, but man, uh, LV and Shuts have a really cool thing going. I mean, as, as y'all heard, uh, that's uh, that's some great music. Yeah, I mean that that I, people hear that and, and I'm sure there's a lot of questions about where that music came from, who that is. Like, man, that's our guy, and uh, it's a great chance to go in there and just just chat with him about what he's doing, uh, his brand as it you know as it uh, you know as it intermixes with fashion, as you will. Um, but uh, you guys will be seeing a lot more of those two. They're two talented motherfuckers, uh, and they are going to be out there, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. It. You know, as soon as uh, that gets packaged correctly, which is what Dusty was talking about, what LV was ta talking about, you know, he's, the way he wants to be branded and how he's going to be packaged is going to be important because the product is there. Um, the rest of the stuff needs, needs to come into play. Uh, how, like I said, how he's packaged, how he's sold, where it goes from there. But uh, you guys will be hearing a lot more of them in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's really interesting to listen to speak. Because every time he's explaining something, you're very quick to understand where he's coming from because he just puts his thoughts into a picture like that, that on a mass scale is understood. And that's why I think um, song or pop, rap, pop rapper like is so um, in grasp for him. Um, and he's really... Really cool to see him like and talk to us about all that stuff. So, um, someone real quick, someone wants to know, Mac, where'd you get the Save Art hat? Oh, um, there's a it's a brand based in LA called Since 1769, and um, yeah, it's cool. It's like the hats, it's only like 40 bucks, and then you just and I think they donate like. Uh, 40 or 50 percent of the purchase to the hat to keeping art classes in high schools in the U.S. So. Damn, that's dope. Yeah, so, uh, it's cool. Apparel asked that, so there you go, man. Um, and a, a couple of people wanted me to talk about like outfits for like each scenario. I guess I can just briefly run through the two we've already talked about. So for like the black ribbon meeting, I kind of just wanted to make it like a darker like tone, like a more serious, like kind of business casual with the black button up, the black jeans, and just a pair of breads. And then for the studio scene, it was more like a, a lighter outfit, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just going to visit some homies. So just, like, cut off shorts, white shoes, um, gray tee, basic shit. Um, did anyone else have anything to say about the studio scene, or you guys want to move on to the next one? Uh, it was cool. Lighting was a little challenge to shoot, but we pushed yeah. through it. And, uh, it was just a really cool atmosphere. It was like, it seemed like that's where hits are made, you know? It was a real studio. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah that, that was real, man, yeah. Yeah, I think that was one of the most honest, that was one of the most honest uh, scenes in there. You know, what, what LV is saying right there is real. If he doesn't have that, he's stocking shelves somewhere. And uh, yeah. that's, that's, that's real, that's raw, and uh, it was cool to hear. It was kind of kind of gave me chills hearing him talk like that. Yeah, and there was a lot we cut out from that, too. Me and Alex, after when we were making the edit, um, there was, like, so much cool stuff he said, and we had to take some of it out because... I mean, the video's already so long. <laughs> well, yeah, and it just didn't really go cohesively, but and that was like the main goal. But yeah, I wish like we could have just made a we could have honestly probably talked for like forty five minutes. <laughs> a video yeah. on that that one segment and. Um. All right. Let's move on to uh, to compound. 
Yeah. Uh, basically, for that scene, it was just kind of like a yo, like let's like hit the trees, let's shop a little bit. Um, and for my outfit, <laughs> I know that this was kind of one that was turning a lot of heads. Um, I decided, you know, um, when I'm going to hit the streets, why not make it a little more on the head-turning side? So I decided to bust out the Raph Simmons uh, with the Subi denim, and then the, the all-red Yeezys. So that was the first time I ever wore the Yeezys, and uh, it was definitely something I was really nervous about. Uh, but I ended up doing it, and I'm, uh, I'm wearing them as much as I can now. So, yeah. Do you have any uh, thoughts on shooting that one, Mac? How how was that? Was that an easy scene to shoot? Uh, in compound, uh, yeah. The I mean, lighting was cool in there. It was, yeah, yeah. It was pretty. That was like a fun kind of like intermission in the video too, because yeah, it was. Definitely. There wasn't um there wasn't any talking. It just I think it kind of gave the viewer a chance to just like enjoy the dope imagery and the shots and uh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, they really got to like absorb what was what they've taken in for the last two or three scenes. You know, yeah. Um, with, with no more uh, talking points in there, and yeah, cool let them just like chill for a bit. Yeah. Mm. And Compound's just like visually interesting. Like it's an awesome store. The people there are cool. Um, check out Compound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got to give a huge thank you to Ira and Katsu for letting us just take a camera in there. So thank you guys again. Yeah. Um, Mikey, do you have any thoughts on that? You just want to move on? Man, my thoughts are all about that two-tone Raph Simmons you were wearing. <laughs> I know, you was asking me about that. Yeah, man. that's that, about to come man. missing from your closet here pretty soon. I know, man. Size medium. Can you fit it? I can fit it. You know this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I can squeeze uh, my frame right. in there. Jeez, man. No, you an L. You'd be an XL on that. Uh, dinner scene was next. Um, that was at Produce Row down in the industrial area of, uh, of Portland. And briefly, my outfit for that, I wanted to go uh, a little more fancier, um, like I said, so I wore, um, I think I wore my uh, my nudies denim with uh, the Ronnie Five filling pieces and a white Alexander Wang button-up, and then I threw on the uh, Lease on Life Society teal jacket to give the outfit a little pop of color um, on top, because uh, I just, for dinner, I just kind of wanted to make a little more of a statement on, on the color-wise, and then all of that, again, all of those conversations were 100% real, uh, 100% raw, you know, like that really just happened. We talked for way more during that uh, scene, we, uh, but we had to cut it down, of course. And uh, what LV was saying and then how I responded was, was completely real. It was, man, I was getting emotional because uh, these dudes really have helped me a lot along the way. So any thoughts on that, guys? The burgers were... <laughs> they were delish nash. <laughs> Crazy burgers, man. Crazy burgers. I had, like, this, like, chicken duck confit or something. It was, like, fancy. They almost didn't let us film there, but then they were they ended up being cool about it. Yeah. Right, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. That was good. That was a pretty easy scene to cut. That was, yeah. And edit and shoot and all that stuff, too. Again, that was kind of, that That's that was pretty, pretty honest, pretty real. Shit, we have meals like that all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah go ahead, Mike. No, no, we're good. We're good. Uh, my whole thing is like a lot of people kind of thought we, you know, we scripted a lot of the things, and we like, you know, why are you talking so serious? Why are you always talking about the future and stuff? Like, you know, but like that's really like the conversations we have uh, on a day to day basis. Like, you know, we're, like we're real. Like, we want to get down to business. We're serious. Like, we can have fun, which is what the next scenes will show. But we can also get down to business and talk serious. Um, and I'm gonna go on a side note, probably in about ten minutes when we get to the end. Uh, but we can go, go on to the uh, the Letterman house, a uh, little, like, pre-party scene. So, I guess I can continue with that. So basically with that, um, that was just, like, us, like, before we were going out, just, like, taking a couple drinks. Um, the outfit for that was, shoot, if I can remember. It was uh, Subi Denim, Common Projects, Achilles Mids, uh, No Lux Long Sleeve, Bape Jacket, and then uh, just a hat. That's just, like, a real casual, like, I'm just chilling with homie's outfit. I didn't want to, like, make too much of a statement. Um, and that was a really fun scene to me because that was, like, actually us, like, having fun um, and drinking. And we were actually, like, that wasn't us, like, staging it. We weren't just, like, jumping around. Like, we were actually having music blaring. Like, Chad did the uh, the, the fucking beluga, uh, <laughs> shotgun to beer beluga did. Uh, like, that was really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyone want to take away anything on that? 
Um, I mean, that was it was kind of challenging for me at first because I was like, man, all my friends are having so much fun out here, and I'm filming, but then it's just like it turned into me having fun too. Um, everyone was having fun. Like you said, it was all real. Yeah, um, you could do the shot with the 40. Like, that's you literally drinking a 40 and carrying I, it out. My camera was drinking a 40. Yeah. And just, yeah, having fun. Mike even tried it. He said it tasted like car oil. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a... <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to say that, uh, that we stage that. We don't do that too often, you know? But uh, yeah, yeah. that's pretty standard on a Friday night. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, man, that's just us. We we we, uh, we work hard. We play hard. There was actually a clip of me drinking that forty, which was like the first forty I've had in eight years. Uh, <laughs> in 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 it, which I was like, no, yo, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I am not the forty drinker here. Yeah, we'll give a little me. shout out to AV for having your back on that one. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yo, uh, you're like, know, uh, AV and I have the same mind. So uh, as soon as we got on the phone, he's like, you want me to take that out, right? And I was like, yep. <laughs> Yep, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's go to Harlem now. Harlem, so Harlem is like our spot. Like that's where we go like every weekend. Um, it's like a tiny little hip-hop bar, but it's like to us, it's like the best in town. Um, that's Harlem One season. Oak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harlem is like the One Oak of Portland. Um so like capacity is like only like fifty people, but when it gets cracking, like it gets it gets cracking in there. So outfit to that real quick was uh, what was it? It was I think it was Subi denim again. It was Rastam as Adidas, uh, Aiden white long sleeve or ADYN white long sleeve, and then that custom commune flannel that I just threw over it. Kind of like a grunge street look because we're kind of going to like a dirtier area of town. Kind of wanted to give it that effect. Um, big shout out to Ian and Harlem and DJ K Marie and Caitlin Calhoun for like being in the shots for uh, for like letting us turn up in there for the vid. Um, that was fun. That was really fun. Yeah, I'm just like thinking about it. Um, that's actually like what we do. You know what I mean? Shout out to Dat Boy too. Yeah. Again, I'd like to say that that's not necessarily you know we stage that, but that's pretty standard. Uh, yeah. You know, our team tends to be leading the league in fun when we go out. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> for better, for better, and for worse. But uh, once again, man, you got to, you guys got to see all the characters. I mean, Reen, Reen made an appearance. We got Curdo in there. Yeah. Uh, man, that was a uh, that was that was deep, and I, that's it, man. That's what uh Tay Tay was in it. That's uh, a yeah. that's what that's what it looks like around here. That's not we're not making this up. <laughs> no, man, it was fun. Um, yeah, how was it shooting in there, Mac? Uh, it was fun. I've always wanted to do something like that, you know. It's like, but since uh, like a lot of places don't just let you bring your camera in like that. But since uh, I think Mikey, you know the owner of there, right? Yeah, he, he's cool with all of us. He's really yeah. cool. He's a good dude. And so that was that was awesome to bring just to bring my camera and LED light in there and just start pointing it at everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Putting the light in their face. Some chicks That's liked like it. Very invading. On, on a night, like, you can't even put a picture of yourself, like, on Facebook or Instagram anymore drinking. And we're, like, out there, like, trying to capture them all without asking for permission. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How uncomfortable can you possibly feel? I mean, a lot, a lot of people, when they saw the camera, like, it was either one or the other. Like, people just jumped in front of it and wanted all of it, or people <laughs> jumped out of the way and didn't want any of it. <laughs> and yeah. some people, like, Curto jump behind it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out Kato. Um, yeah, that was a fun scene. And then basically a continuation with that um, is that we kind of did stage this part. We made it seem like, yo, we party till 5 a.m. And uh, what we did is we uh, – but the conversations on the rooftop were real. So what we did is we uh, we went to the rooftop. We all woke up at 4.30 a.m. We did. Um, yes, we did. <laughs> and went to – so shout out to Kayla. She let us use her uh, rooftop uh, for that scene. Um, we all went to the rooftop, and Mac just stuck a camera in our face, and we just started talking, like real, real, like five a.m. talks. Like you had the whole night to like just think uh, and reflect on shit, and like we woke up and immediately just got right into it. Um, so the, the outfits, all of our outfits were basically the same. It was just kind of like a, like a yo, it's like five a.m. Like I took off the flannel and kind of put it on my neck because it's kind of like a, a well, how do you say it, Alex? Like a 
it was like a messed up look in a way. To show. Yeah, to show like the party scene. It was um, the, it was the next day hangover. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so conversations were real, man. Like we all we all knew when the conversation was over. Um, we all kind of like, because we were talking, 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 and then it's like, I think I said something, and then everyone just stopped, and we're like, yo, that's the perfect cut. And then we just, uh, we headed back home. Uh, did you guys want to say anything about that as well? Yo, uh, now, now, that, uh, now that the truth's out there, I'm going to touch on this a little bit. Um, so, <laughs> I see you, I see you, A.V. <laughs> uh, so, uh. We uh, that was originally supposed to be an evening. That was going to be the the the, the pregame. Uh, that was going to be the pregame uh, before we went out, and it was Thursday night. We were shooting Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, that was going to be Saturday evening, yeah. and we we get our Thursday night. Matt gets into town. Uh, Av and I are crushing a little bit, starting at like you know nine o'clock. Mac Mac rolls in pretty soon after, and uh, we're just make you know dotting our I's, crossing our T's and all that, and we realize that it's going to be pouring rain on Saturday night. Well, Saturday evening, we want to shoot that. So, you know, by this time, it's like 11 o'clock on Thursday night, and we're like, oh, shoot. And we're sitting there, and we're trying to figure out how we can make, what we can do, and it's like, boom, we're going to make it the morning after going out. So it's like, okay, cool, we got that whole idea. Then it's like, wait, we got to shoot that in the morning. So it's 11 o'clock, and we check the, the sunrise, and it's like a 5.30 sunrise. I was like, shoot, we gotta shoot that in five hours. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we all go home and shut our eyes for a few minutes. <laughs> we get out. Everyone gets up in the morning. You got Jacob and I out out in front of Kayla's hitting push-ups. We look, you know, good for the camera and all that. And uh, and then <laughs> yeah, off, push-ups, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Five a.m. push-ups on the sidewalk, and uh, we got Colin, who's a, who's an integral part of this, who is not here. Uh, who who was a, is a can't miss in the scene, and we have one chance to shoot it, and that fool can't be found anywhere. Yeah, Av is parked on, out, outside of his house, waiting for him, and he's just like, I don't know where he is, man. I don't know where he is. And I, had that was, I had to go to his back door and knock yeah. on the door. And right when I did that, he texted me. He's like, I'm up, I'm up, and we're out, we're like 15 minutes late at this point. Uh, but I mean, the iPhone, you know, you just can't count on that alarm sometimes. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, but you know, I want to talk, touch touch on just the, the overall ending to the video, and um, like Mikey was saying, it was supposed to be a sunset leading into a um, night out, and you know, this was this was this was all Mikey's like last minute troubleshooting idea on doing it as a sunrise instead, and and explaining to me that. That really solidifies the ending much better, and also gives you that like next the beginning like you know it, it, it starts in the early morning, but it also ends in the early morning like that. that, that it's all full circle, you know. Um, but it's still a much more solidified ending than just a party scene at the end. So yeah. Yeah, go ahead, man. Because I, I I'm gonna go on a rant, but go ahead. No, it's all you, bro. Um, so this was kind of like when I was like when we had these conversations and we were talking. Um, a lot of some people like called it out. They were like, "Yo, like, why are you guys talking like that? Like, you're acting like you're kind of the shit and stuff, and saying like, yo, you're here, you're the culture, blah blah blah. Like, give us five years or whatever. Um, and then my whole thing, I was I was just gonna go on a quick rant right here. Um, is that a lot of people, t when I said, like, yo, we're here, we're the culture, um, and, like, give us, like, two years, I didn't just mean me, and I didn't just mean um, our team. Uh, I meant, like, there is this youth fashion culture that is taking over right now in, in, in the world. Like, there are such, like, inspirational and such motivated people that are, like, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Like, these young people, like, uh, like, LaVon, like, Mason, like, Sean Thompson, Matt Sheridan, like, Ever Our Best, like, Gio, Darian Bruce, even, like, Ian Connor and, like, Kadeem Fletcher. Like, all these dudes are literally under 22 years old, and they are making huge, huge waves in the industry. 
So when I said like, yo, we're here, we're the culture, I didn't just mean me. I meant like there is a huge group of people that like all of those people like know about each other. Like, we all are like one group and one culture. And these like aspiring just like no so wait, these like old designers like you know like Balmain, like uh, Ricardo Tisci, like Givenchy, like all these people that are older have paved the way for like these 17, 18, 19 year old kids to make a splash uh, in this industry. So you're seeing like the youth come up, and you're seeing the youth making a huge impact and doing these runway shows and making a huge impact in society. So when I said we're the culture and we're here, I didn't just mean me. I meant all of us and all of these people uh, that are really on the come up. Um, that was my huge rant, and I had it in the shower before I did this video, and I wanted to like I was trying to remember it, and I finally just got, got it all out and remembered it. So I'm glad that it got it out, but that's kind of what I meant by that. So. Just there's a lot of people that are doing their thing in the industry, and I'm happy to support them. So that was my rant. And um, yeah. So as far as like anybody's response, it's maybe on the video. We're responsible for people liking or not liking this. Like we're in, in we're responsible for challenging ourselves. And challenging the people around us, and that's exactly what we did. Um, and that's why, uh, in my opinion and our opinion, we were able to put together a really good product. Yeah. And and the same goes. I think I think uh, like younger and younger people are learning. Like you don't respond to that stuff. It doesn't hold any weight. You know, if if, if they have something bad to say, it just doesn't affect anybody. Because we're so focused. So. Yo, can I can I talk for a second? Yeah, anyway. Cool. So, you know, it, obviously, uh, Jacob is very modest here, um, very humble. I, I'm a little less modest, a little less humble. Uh, you know, we are we have a talented group of people around us that are working really hard, and, and I got a real we're uh, we're doing a great job, and. Uh, we are next, man. Uh, yeah. And that may, that might sound cocky, but I'm just I just call it how I see it, man. Uh, and uh, I think Jacob was spot on there. He's like, man, we're uh, we're killing it, and uh, we're having a lot of fun. And we're working hard, and there's no reason to, to downplay that. Like y'all can y'all can think whatever you want of that, but uh, I mean, if you can't big up yourself, who can you big up? You know. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, you know, not let that one slide by with Jacob's really modest answer. Yeah, man. I, mean, I had to put my, I had to put my confident, my, my, my overly confident two cents in real quick. No, that's awesome, and I appreciate it. Um, yeah. yeah, I would rather have like other people do the talking for me. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, man, that was, that was just, uh, that was an amazing learning experience for all of us. I think, um, and I'm, I'm extremely happy to have, you know. Alex and Mikey playing a lot of it, and extremely, extremely happy to have Max so on board um, with with the with the visuals. Um, so, I mean, afterwards, like after it dropped and the tweets were just ro like you guys wouldn't imagine. I know we got eight hundred mentions, um, like like not just like interactions, but like mentions, like people actually talking to me and saying, "Yo, amazing video." So I just like had the I literally felt the need. I called individually like twelve people, like all twelve people that had a huge role in this. I just called them, and I, I I just really wanted to, like, explain to them how much it meant to me. And, again, like, you guys might say, like, yo, this is just a YouTube video. But to us, it wasn't. And that's, what to me, what matters. Like, if, like, there was, like, this saying that this one dude was, like, telling me, like, yo, you're just, like, making yourself out to be someone, like, you're, like, a big influence in the fashion world. And some dude responded and said, if he wants to be that, who are you to say he isn't? You know what I mean? So I'm saying, like, if we want, if this is more than a YouTube video for us, who are these people to say that it wasn't just a that it is just a YouTube video? Because to us, it wasn't. It was a production. It was a movie. It was an experience. Um, and I'm extremely happy to to uh, to be in this chat with you guys. So I truly appreciate all your hard work. Um, that's real. That's real. You already know, bro. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know what else you guys want to talk about. If you want to end it, if you want to. Keep bullshitting. It's up to you guys. Yo, you are there other questions? I can't see the questions. You know. Oh I'm yeah. Um, I can uh, take some questions real quick. Doesn't anybody want to know where my hat's from? 
<laughs> Bucket Nash, you been? Bucket, I've been. Bucket Nash. Um, someone was saying here, I'll read a really nice comment. So, guys, I really want to say congratulations, and look what video definitely shows that the enterprise culture has moved from just mainstream shopping to definitely more business startups fueled by e-commerce. You guys have definitely proved that the Internet is a very powerful resource if used in the right manner. So shout out Kieran. I think I said that right. Um, thank you, man. Um, let's see. You already answered the... Oh, there was a question that I saw. Um, a lot, some people were saying that they didn't really notice that about the intro, so that we said that was pretty good. Um, shout out to uh, Ibrahim from tuning in from Paris. Appreciate that, man. Um... Everyone that says uh, they, they really like the video, I, I, I thank you again. There really isn't many, like, comments. I think a lot of people are just listening, to be honest. Um, yeah. Wow. Thank you, guys. Really. I hope we sound good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I hope. Um, yeah, man. I, I mean, I think we can so, cut it. Well, since this is a fashion chat, let me just go off of a uh, thought that I've been having. Yeah, uh, do it, man. Let's hear it. Um, so... I think a lot of people can relate to this, but in high school, like it's it's pretty hard, uh, especially back before fashion was so predominant for men. It's like uh, looked at as not tough or whatever you want to call it. Um, but just learning more and more and more and more and more about like manufacturing and stuff and just the garment industry in general, it's funny to me that there's that connotation on males. Um, caring about their appearance and and even like going into fashion it's like there's just a, a, a sissy connotation I guess associated with it um, and I guess what I'm getting at is like the toughness that's involved in creating quality and um, garments that you know people end up like literally voting on saying that they like them um, when when dealing with the process of quality, it's like you might have to deal with these manufacturers in Honduras that or these third world countries, blah blah blah, that have so many different uh, different cultural norms that like are pretty scary to deal with, um, and you really have to be like mentally in tune, mentally stable, and like very strong willed to even like fly that plane and land it in a business sense. So uh, anytime anybody says anything bad about fashion, I just think like I kind of wanted to throw out that cosign that it's not as easy as it may look on the surface. So Totally. Um, sorry, I was just reading some Twitter. Yeah, that's real, man. Do uh, you guys have any, like, Finishing remarks that you guys want to go off on. And it was a fun. It was a whole fun project. Like Mikey was saying, it was hard work and it was fun. And those two, I think, should always go hand in hand. It'll make your work better. Definitely. Yo. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, just a little, little background. I. Uh, Y'all don't know. I've been. I mean, I've been at home for more than a couple of days, like the last two weeks. Uh, I was out in Miami and I'm down in California now, and. Uh, I was like out in the middle of nowhere, seriously, uh, doing some stuff yesterday when it dropped. And uh, I actually have been a little disconnected because I've been on the road and uh, I didn't got to see the, the final product until it was actually dropped. And I was, <laughs> I'm sitting outside yeah. of the bar, bar, I'm sitting on the curb, and I'm literally like, I'm getting goosebumps all over me. And I'm, I'm literally like almost in tears lost shit because it's just so cool. And it was such an awesome, you know, uh, man, it was just like, it was our baby for the last for the last month. Like this has been our our thing, and uh, this crazy culmination of all this hard work from all these great talented people who I, who I love and respect. It's crazy, and it came together so cool. And uh, you know the, the the everyone out there, the viewers, you, the fans, the uh, the followers were the you know lucky recipients of that shit. Man, that was a ton of work. I'm so proud of everybody that uh, was part of it. I appreciate everybody was part of it. 
appreciate everybody who watched it, everybody who commented, everybody who shared it. Like, you know, we're we're doing this, and it's great to have you guys along for the ride, man. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Man, on that note, let's get some outros, because that, that was real. Um, my name is Jacob Keller, at Jacob J. Keller. Y'all already know. Mac, go ahead, my man. My name is Mac Shoup, at Young X Visionary on Twitter and Instagram. Um, it's not about the camera you use. Um, it's about how you use it. I've been getting too many tweets like that, so that's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, We're gonna Mikey. Be here. Me, um, uh, man. I don't know. Like I said, man, it's it's, it's so cool that y'all are rocking with us and all this. Um, you can find me at m at m one k e y r e e v e s. I gotta warn you, I'm not that dope on Twitter, but uh, I'm pretty dope in real life. So uh, I appreciate all y'all. Appreciate everyone's support. It's so cool to see all the people who who mess with Jacob and, and that are inspired by Jacob. I'm inspired by Jacob. I'm inspired by all the people around me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, it's so cool to have you all on for the, uh, the ride. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Baby. Yeah, I, I can't top that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My bad, bro. <laughs> yeah, Alex Beltry, at Alex Beltry on Instagram, and at Alex Beltry underscore on Twitter. Um, all I got to say is go hard at whatever you do, man. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, appreciate everyone tuning in. Appreciate everyone supporting. Uh, The love is real. So thank you guys again. Peace out.